Good morning and welcome to Valley Views. I'm your host, Glenn Edison. Certainly glad to have you today. And as always, we want to thank BTC Fiber for hosting our program. And you can see these interviews on BTC Fiber's YouTube page as well as BTC Fiber's Cable Channel 18. We'd also like to thank our sponsors of our program, which is Needful Things General Store right on Highway 127 just past the Bethel Church of Christ if you're going towards Pikeville or right before the Bethel Church of Christ as you're going coming from Pikeville. And also uh, Fall Creek Realty is in the same building. Uh, go by and check out those folks and see what they have. You might have something you, you might want. And today we have with us Jennifer Ashby. She's the clinical director at Benchmark Physical Therapy. So Jennifer, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having me here. Well, uh, first of all, let's go back and do a little bit of, uh, maybe a little background on Benchmark and a little bit of the history of Benchmark. Yes, well, we the company started in Ottawa was the first clinic, and then we've been here in Dunlap for 21 years. Wow. The company has grown substantially. We've um, acquired a couple other companies, merged with another company, and we're now across 28 states. Really? Yes. Wow. So we have a lot of clinics. I can't. I'm not even sure the actual number now. Well, that, that's interesting because, uh, of course, I guess uh, when I was growing up, uh, you just didn't have these type of services. You know, you just either suffered through pain or had to go to the doctor. Right. And, you know, therapy has grown even since I've been out of school and I've been out 12 years and it's changed even since then. Yes, yeah, so, uh, that's good because uh, uh, sometimes instead of having to go to a doctor, maybe because uh, I know a lot of times in pain you get either shots or you get meds, you know, to help out a pain right. that could be helped out through therapy and uh, um, or massage or whatever uh, right. it, uh, needed somewhere else. Right, and we see a lot of people for, for all different kinds of painful problems um, from, you know, sprained ankle to chronic back pain to, you know, neck pain, even dizziness, um, and you know, we, we see people from referrals from doctors, but then if your insurance allows, you can come to us through direct access without a oh, referral. Okay. So in other words, you could just walk in and say, hey, right. I, I need this service. Right. You know. Most commercial policies are that way at least. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. oh, that, that's good to know. So mm -hmm. it's just like going to your doctor. You, you don't have to go in unless you're sick. So this way, you, if you right. got something that's not necessarily a medical where you need to see a doctor, Right. And go to your service. And we communicate with uh, your doctor as well. We would, you know, let them know that you've come in, send them the information, and we have um, trainings. We're, Amanda and I are actually doctors of physical therapy, so we have trainings so that we would kind of look out for red flags to know if you need to maybe go back to a doctor or have an x-ray. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well that, that, that's good to know because that way you're... Um I think used to, uh, uh, as I was growing up, a lot of times doctors competed with one another and they wouldn't necessarily help each right. other. But now I see more services uh, because uh, if if you went to you and then you went to another doctor and went to another doctor and went to another and none of you knew what was going on, uh, you might be either right. overlapping or putting too much or something. Right. We like to work together with our doctors and our orthopedics and I've worked some as well with chiropractors and things of that nature. Sent people to chiropractors, re them refer people to me, dentists even, so because we do treat jaw pain as well. So we've, you know, we try to work together with other providers because that's best for the patient. Well, that's good uh, and because um, that way uh, uh, your doctor knows what's going on instead of uh, like Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't seen you in a while. I didn't right. know, know that was going right. on. And, and they could have uh, maybe helped out as well. Right. So that uh, that's good to know because that way uh, it's just helping each other. Yes. And it helps you because you might be informed of something that you may not need to do because it's maybe not mm -hmm. medically correct for you to do. Exactly. And uh, that, that helps you out as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because you don't want to hurt anybody. Exactly. And, uh, you know, that's always a possibility when you're not sure you do something that you didn't know maybe you weren't supposed to do because you didn't know. Right, something. right. So that's that's good. Um, uh, 
Well, you've already answered that question. The patient sorry. Does, uh, no, that's all right. You, uh, patient doesn't have to be referred. They can just walk in. So. Right. All right. That's good. That's good to know. Now, um, um, what are what are some of the services y'all offer there at, at your office? Well, um, in terms of kind of the things that we well, we specialize in orthopedics. Amanda and I, my other therapist, Amanda Johnson, and I are both orthopedic clinical specialists. So we have had extra training in specifically orthopedics and we're board certified. Uh -huh. um, and we do a lot of hands-on manual therapy, exercise, um, different activities to help you get back to your day-to-day -day function. But um, I'm also certified in dry needling. And that is um, the use of monofilament needles, like you think of acupuncture style uh -huh. needles, uh -huh. um, to release muscle tension. So it's different than acupuncture, but it's the use of the you know the needles, the same needles. Same type concept. Right, and that's to help with uh, muscle tension, and um, it can also help just relax things and um, improve your mobility. And then I'm also certified in A-STEM, and that's a soft tissue mobilization with instruments to help break up scar tissue and improve mobility um, with uh, just the tools, rubbing across the muscles and things like that. So, um, and then let's see, um, Amanda is about to get her dry needling certification also, so she will be uh, certified in that too, but... Um, the other thing that we're both certified in is called LSVT Big, um, and what that is, it's, it's a specific treatment specifically for Parkinson's, uh -huh. and we treat patients with Parkinson's to help them um, with their balance and their function because oftentimes those patients have trouble taking large enough steps and turning around and just doing day-to-day -day tasks, and it's to help them with their stepping and their functional activity because oftentimes they get uh, to where they can't walk as well right, right. and things like that. So we're both certified in that and um, I think that's everything. It's <laughs> quite a bit. That's yeah, yeah. Impressive. We try to, you know, get several certifications so that we are up to date on all the research and, you know, have the best tools to help treat our patients. Well, I know you mentioned scar tissue. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize uh, that scar tissue can, you know, it builds up a lot of times. It can, and, yes. And, uh, and uh, can cause a lot of different issues that you don't normally expect. It definitely can after surgery. or People think of scar tissue as, you know, if you've been cut into, you have scar tissue. But just after a basic injury, you can get scar tissue build up after inflammation and, you know, just connective tissue um, problems and things of that nature to... Um, and if you can loosen some of that up, that can help with your movement and even your muscle function. Right, because uh, a lot of times that scar tissue, it builds up on those muscles and it kind of puts a pressure on that mm -hmm. muscle mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes hurts. Yes, <laughs> yes. Quite a bit. And, and it's all because it's just a scar tissue. It's nothing yes. like a, uh, any disease or anything that's causing or a pinched nerve right. it's just this tissue. And, and a lot of people worry about, you know, when we're kind of loosening up some of that scar tissue or kind of helping that nerve move better that it's going to be painful, which sometimes it is, but our goal is to get people to where they're not painful. So sometimes you got to get through a little of that pain up front to get to the point where it's not as painful. Right. It's like, uh, well, like in your case, in chiropractors, Sometimes it hurts when you are, are uh, adjusted and, and everything, right. but eventually it, that works its way out. Right. Once you build up the flexibility and the joint mobility and the muscle function, then that's kind of our goal is to get people more independent. Yeah, I try not to uh, uh, scream or holler when I'm getting worked on, but sometimes, <laughs> it, sometimes it hurts. You know, it can. But... Uh, Nothing against y'all. I'm just saying that's that's me. I've never been to physical therapy. I've been to a chiropractor. Right. And so sometimes it it uh, it does bother you when you got something that's aching. Yes, but again, our our goal is to work away from that. And a lot of times, the first couple of visits can be that way. But our goal is to get to where those things aren't as tight and as painful so actually your goal is to work it to where they're not your patient well yeah that's true I mean, as that's, well yes because you know, I mean, <laughs> they're getting them back to they're doing home exercises and where they're you know not having the trouble or the pain with the functional activities right 
and uh, that, that's that's really neat uh, that you you can do all that. And you mentioned the Parkinson's. Uh, of course, that's a tough disease for anybody. And yes. uh, like you mentioned, you're not able to to really move like you normally would. Right. And uh, and if you're able to help them move a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, or like you said, just turning around, that's that's hard for someone. Yes. And it's frustrating right. because their brain's telling them to do something, but their body's not cooperating. So. We try to help them figure out how to fix that or at least combat it. Combat it. Or if you're stubborn like me, sometimes you think, well, I can do that. And then you go, no, I can't right. do this. It hurts more than I realize. Right, right. So, uh, uh, and I don't mean I'm that stubborn. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. Yes. Um, now, um, um, once, uh, say, uh, um, is there a... I guess based on uh, insurance and things like that, is there a certain amount of time that you can work with the patient, or is that, or do you uh, have to show like gains? Right. Uh, that type of thing. Well, we want to be able to see progress after three, four visits, somewhere around there, because sometimes it's not within the first visit. A lot of times it can be. But um, we want to see that progress within the first couple of weeks. And different insurances are different. Some people have, you know, a 20 visit per year limit. And Medicare has a dollar amount limit. And, you know, different insurances have different guidelines. But our office coordinator, Jen, is really good. And she keeps track of everything. And we make sure that people, we're going along with what people's insurance is. And unfortunately, you know we don't want that to be a barrier for people unfortunately right. it is sometimes but we try our best to work with people as much as possible so where they get what they need and that's not a barrier for them hopefully well good because I know that's uh, uh, been a problem for years for for many people is yes. just you know it it does cost I mean that's yes. that's the fact of life mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's uh, you want to get healthy but you think well I don't have the money I right can't. so you uh, it's nice to know that y'all work with people and try to yes and we do situation. our best to you know work with what's best for their financial situation or you know if they have a certain number of visits and they want to spread them out um, you know typically we see people two to three times a week but if you know someone could only come once a week at least we could get in there and do a little bit with them and give them some home exercises uh -huh. and be progressing them if they aren't able to come as often I mean you can't do it for free but you work with people right right <clears throat> work around their kind of their schedule and see yes what they can do. yes we will well that's good because uh, a lot of people um, you know of course especially the elderly who are on fixed incomes you know they get to where uh, you know they're having to decide do I buy this medication or do I buy I food know, it's or do awful. I, yeah and so they're they're in a lot of uh, situations where they they can't do a whole lot mm -hmm. and uh, so if you could just help them you know maybe like you said once a week right uh, or something like that that might be something they could work right out. right and that's good that y'all do that because uh, uh, you know, a lot of companies don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to put our patients first, but we also know that we want to be able to help them as much as we can and do what they need us to do to help them. So. Well, good, good. That, that's good to know because that way, you, uh, it's it's good to know that you help people. That way, people can uh, we can suggest you go by and see them and yeah. see y'all and and uh, work something out uh, if something doesn't work out. Uh, now, do y'all do, do uh, like for example, uh, patients that maybe are in home, they can't get out, do y'all do in-home therapy? Or is no, we don't do any in-home therapy. Um, we're just strictly outpatient. Um, and yeah, I was trying to think if um, there's anything else I messed up. I'll pause. Okay. No, we don't do any in-home therapy at all. Um, it would be nice if we could, but we're just set up for outpatient at this time. Right, because well, that's that's a whole other ball game too when you have to go it into is. that, and uh, you go under different guidelines too. That's well, what I was gonna say. There's lots of different regulations, I think, with that. So, and then you get in when you're in someone's home. If something happens, you, maybe you get hurt or they get hurt. You know, right. there's a lot of uh, uh, right. technicalities and regulations you have to work around. Yes. So uh, I can understand that. Um, now, uh, 
do y'all work with uh, the various schools, maybe the athletic programs, anybody that needs help? Well, we don't work directly with the schools, but we have lots of patients that have been hurt uh, at school, you know, baseball players, football players, that sort of thing. Um, really from all around, Grundy, Whitwell, Sequatchie, uh, we have patients from all different schools. Just depends on who's getting hurt when, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of the sports, uh, even though they're not necessarily listed as a contact sport, sometimes they oh, can yeah, be. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, a lot of times we think about football as a contact sport, but you've got baseball and basketball who are just mm -hmm. as much contact at times. Oh yeah, definitely. And, or soccer, you know. Yes. And, uh, well, are there times when uh, maybe uh, uh, you've tried to do as much as you can, you've done everything, and you still don't see the progression, do you all send them on to other places or other uh, things where they get. yeah so um you know a lot of times people when they first come in they'll say well i haven't had an mri how are you gonna you know fix me if i don't know what's wrong but we're trying to do special tests and different things like that to see if we can figure out what's going on and uh, then if we don't see that progression we can always send them back to the doctor or if they haven't been to an orthopedic they might go there or possibly like you were saying an injection or you know further testing um, you know and we've also had some patients that may have to even go to pain management if it's kind of a chronic condition but um, it, I even tell people you know if especially with chronic pain you know we want to get you more functional so even though if you're still having pain if we can get you more functional with the same amount of pain that's still progress so right. um but yes we'll refer out to you know like i said earlier chiropractor or orthopedic but we always check with their um referring doctor first you know to see well, know what they want to do in the like pain pain management uh when you talked about the chronic pain mm -hmm. a lot of times uh the patient's just going to have that pain and they have to be because uh, there's not much you can do to fix it it's at to that point well and it a lot of it is you know if you've had the same pain for 20 years and maybe you've never had therapy and maybe you've been on pain medication your entire life you know you're probably going to continue to have pain but if we can get you maybe a little instead of a seven out of ten when you get up and take a shower it's a six out of ten and yeah. it's not as difficult and you're not going to fall because you have better strength then that's still you know a win for us and for the patients so well i know i've talked to uh, uh friends of mine that have had to go through that pain management mm -hmm. and uh uh for them it was a relief where uh, i think they were getting shots and some other things yes. but it was able to help them improve a little bit Right, you know. right. And, you know, a lot of times people will get those shots and then um, they'll have a little more therapy because they're feeling a little better. So sometimes we can progress them a little bit more as well after those shots. Kind of work hand in hand. Really. Yes. Well, yes. That, that, that's good to know, too. Um, uh, do y'all have a, a age limit that y'all work on? I mean, is there a... So, um, I have seen anywhere from four months all the way up to, you know, I don't know, 96 or something like that. So, um, and a lot of people, you know, there are pediatric specialists and I'm definitely yeah. not that, but um, there's not a pediatric therapist that's, you know, physical therapist here in the Valley. So um, I really like working with the babies. I, I definitely couldn't do it all day, but I enjoy having kind of a change in scenery type thing and uh, treating their, um, a lot of times we see them for torticollis, which is a, where their neck is tight and we stretch their neck. And um, sometimes it's just developmental delay. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, I enjoy seeing that every once in a while. And then um, all the way up to, you know, like I said, I think my oldest patient probably about 96, and those patients you have to take a little slower a lot of times, um, but um, and then everyone in between. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and with the, of course with the babies, uh, they can't tell you what's bothering them. You just exactly. kind of have to play around with that. And I, right. I don't mean that in a bad uh, bad way. You just have to figure figure it out. Right, and you know a lot of it is 
confidence too. Um, you know, a, a baby when you're stretching their neck or having them roll, you know, they can tell if you're nervous. So um, I was able to do a little bit of training at a children's um, pediatric therapy location when I was in PT school. So I was able to gain a little confidence treating those babies there. And so I feel pretty comfortable doing it. And um, a lot of it is also teaching the parents how to, to work with them at home because, you know, that's a big part of progression just in therapy in general too, but especially with the babies. Yeah, and there's nothing worse than having a, a crying baby who can't tell you what's wrong. I know, yeah. And you're trying to figure it out and you're doing everything you can. Right. But a lot of times it's just a lot of playing and different various positions and we get to, I get to play with them and have them turn this way or look that way. So even though it's therapy, it's just kind of playing with them too. So which is fun for me. Well, and you also mentioned the, the elderly. Uh, of course, uh, um, they're in a situation where their bones may be more fragile. Right. But, and a lot of people, you know, may not realize, but if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, doing weight-bearing exercises is actually good to help build the bones. But you just have to make sure you don't do too much of it or stress them too much. Um, and, and that can be really helpful, too, for, you know, just day-to-day -day function and even pain. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess the body's a, a, a weird object because <laughs> you, it can hurt for a lot of reasons and sometimes you can hurt in one area but the, there may be somewhere else on your body that's really the cause of that area. Oh hurting. yeah, and we see that a lot. You know, we'll see patients and they'll say, my shoulder hurts, my shoulder hurts. And we figure out that it's actually their neck that is causing them the problem. And their neck doesn't hurt, but we assess their neck and if we move this particular uh joint in their spine and it may cause their shoulder pain or if we put pressure on their spine it causes their shoulder pain so uh, they may, may not even realize that it, they have a neck problem so we do screen everybody and try to figure out exactly where the problem is coming from so it's really a, a true science really it can be and some of it can be a little trial and error too i mean sometimes if people are really really painful and really flared up and everything hurts sometimes yeah. it's just a matter of kind of going with what we can and doing what we can and treating that and seeing how it goes for a visit or two and if it's getting worse or it's getting better then we go move forward accordingly yeah because it could be anywhere from a, a pinched nerve to a vertebra out of place uh, you know just all kind of things that send it because i know those pinched nerves they send messages all over the body oh definitely definitely and muscles can refer as well and a lot of people you know, think they have pinched nerves sometimes, and it's actually a muscle referring down to their fingertip. It's a muscle, it was one of their rotor, rotator cuff muscles that's actually giving them the pain in their hand, so. Yeah, so there's a lot lot to this, and uh, of course, how, how long did you have to go to school? You said you have your doctorate degree yes. now. So you went to school for a while. Yeah, so it's a undergraduate degree, uh, and then you go to PT school, which is about three years. So uh, about seven years altogether. And then like I was saying, Amanda and I both went to a, a residency program after, which is um, anywhere from 12 to 18 months. So that kept you busy then? Yes. <laughs> but you uh, uh, did a lot of on-job training and everything. Yes, yeah, so you have clinicals and, and mentor and all that all through school and then through the residency. And, you know, we also have continuing education we do on a yearly basis. Um, and then uh, Amanda and I are both mentors for some of our other therapists at our other clinics, too. Um, so, you know, they're, we're always learning and we're always... Um, learning from each other and learning new things, new evidence, that sort of thing. So uh, you and Amanda help uh, uh, some of the uh, folks at other clinics with the company? Yeah, so some of the newer therapists that come on that are out of, right out of school um, try to help, you know, help them and just be there for them if they have questions and uh, things like that. So, and it's good for networking and kind of getting to know some of the newer people at our company that, you know, have just come on and it allows them to know people outside of their own clinic as well. Now does Benchmark, I know you said they have uh, plenty of clinics around, do they have a, a lot in the valley, you know, like in Grundy and uh, the, 
the area. So we have one down in Jasper. So the closest ones would be Jasper. We're up in Crossville and Dayton. And then one of our partners results physiotherapy up on Signal Mountain. So those are the closest ones. For so there's quite a few around here that mm -hmm. someone, someone can go to. If yeah, so you them. know, some people, you know, driving across the mountain to work, you know, we've got them kind of in every area of Chattanooga as well, so. Well, and I'm sure you've been with them for how long now? 12 years. 12 years, so mm -hmm. you must like them. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. You know, I, uh, it's amazing just to think about how you start and how you grow and, um, kind of the different things that you learn along the way, but I've I really enjoyed it and it's been nice to kind of grow with the company as well. Now imagine there's new things you learn every day from stuff that you didn't learn in school. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Patients definitely teach me a lot and then, you know, just seeing different new things that you haven't seen, rare things that um, you know, you've maybe never seen. That happens every once in a while too, especially being kind of in the valley here, kind of outside of Chattanooga. You see something just random that you haven't ever seen before. So, but we try to accommodate and treat, you know, as much as we can. The only thing we don't really treat here is probably pelvic floor and lymphedema. Those two things we don't have a specialist in here for, so. But if you came across that, you you would send them to us. Mm -hmm. We have they're clinics they're in Chattanooga that treat those things. So, well, that's good, and I, I'm glad y'all can uh, treat a lot of things you do here because it mm -hmm. saves, like you said, saves somebody from having to go across the mountain. Yes. And uh, so it saves them a lot of time and money. Yes. And well, that's good. Was well, there anything we haven't covered you want to bring out that y'all do or? Uh, well, um, there is one new thing coming up this year for us. Um, we, um, as I said earlier, we have a partner with Results Physiotherapy, um, and uh, we're actually going to be changing brands to Results Physio Physical Therapy. Um, and the reason that's happening is um, our clinic, along with a lot of the Middle Tennessee benchmarks, um, are partnering with Results, and um, a lot of those results clinics were part, already partnered with Ascension St. Thomas uh -huh. and so we're all going to be the same brand and it, it just so happens we're going to be changing to that brand. So we're excited. It's not going to change a whole lot for us except for it's going to kind of give uh, you know patients and uh, providers just better access to each other and physical therapy in general and work a little more closely with that hospital because we do get several referrals from that area just especially for people that are up in you know the Grundy area uh, mostly because right. um, a lot of them will go that direction for their specialists but right. um, you know we benchmark acquired results in I think it was 2021 and then just kind of moving forwards so, uh, I don't know exactly when it's gonna happen but um, it should be sometime this year okay well good now that's uh, St. Thomas in Nashville, right? yes, the hospital yes. there. So, so if anything happened to where y'all had done everything you could, and there was uh, no other place to go, you would send them there. I guess. I mean, we again, we still have great relationships with all the doctors out of Chattanooga as well. Again, I'm not. We don't know what that means exactly yet, and we're included in that, and we're not really sure what that means for us. Um, moving forwards but we just know that it's going to give us a better access That's to those physicians and they're going to have better access to us oh, good. with um for their patients uh -huh. um and we're still going to keep all those relationships out of chattanooga as well but um so we're going to be having that uh i don't know when it's going to happen but a new sign results pt um but just want everyone to know that it's still us nothing's really changing it's just our name that's changing um but we're excited about it well good well, we can get that message out yeah we'll, we'll try to do that yeah is there anything yeah by the way how can the people get in touch with you if they need to uh, oh yes yes um our phone number is 423 949-2793 and uh, our website is benchmarkpt.com and you can actually even request a, an appointment phone call on there as well um, or you can stop by our clinic and we are located um, on Rankin Avenue 
and we are across from Taco Bell. We, we moved a little over a year ago, so uh -huh. some people may not realize that we're in that new location. So. All right. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you being with us. Yes. Today. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you. And again, you can see this interview on BTC Fiber's YouTube page as well as BTC Fiber's Cable Channel 18. And again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Needful Things General Store right on Highway 127 and Fall Creek Realty. So until next time, have a great day. Hey everybody, this is Glenn Edison from Valley Views. We appreciate you watching our shows and we would like for you to like, share, and follow us on Facebook as well as like and subscribe to our YouTube page.